Esselamu Aleyküm ve Rahmetullah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Soylak. I am from Erciyes University, Kayseri, Turkey. Uh, firstly, I want to start with my best wishes to all of you. I miss all of you. I missed all of my friends at Kahiro, all of, my, all of my colleagues at Kahiro, and also I miss all of my friends which attend the conference from foreign countries, including Russia, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and others. Uh, and uh, inshallah, this pandemic condition will end and we will be together uh, with all of you. Uh, I miss you very, very much. And firstly, and another special thanks to Dr. Mitat Ibrahim and Dr. Hanan for uh, their invitation. And also, uh, I was not uh, with you uh, last year. Uh, I have some pandemic conditions, COVID, COVID problem. And uh, I want to thank to Dr. Mitad Ibrahim for his very important support for me about uh, my bad conditions. Alhamdulillah, I am now uh, at better conditions and uh, I can uh, give you a lecture about my studies. Uh, I'm uh, working on uh, separation and preconcentration of traces metal ions and traces organic pollutants from the environmental samples. And we are using preconcentration and separation techniques. And nowadays we are using especially uh, on micro extraction studies. Uh, in my presentation, in my presentation, I will give you a novel, my presentation title is a novel approach on the micro extraction and solid phase micro extraction uh, for trace species from environmental samples. And uh, firstly, I want to start salt phase extraction. Uh, salt phase extraction is one of the separation and preconcentration method for the traces analyt ions in the uh, various materials, including natural waters, ores, uh, biological samples, and etc. Uh, the main uh, advantages of the salt phase extra extraction are uh, it's a sensitive, fast, economic, Large preconcentration factors is possible, simplicity of fuzz separation, and suitability for automation studies. And uh, in the salt phase extraction studies, uh, a salt phase, which we called adsorbent, which has some uh, properties uh, which are given below, it should be porous, it's porosity having a large surface area, a material which is a, a high surface a area is, uh, it can be used for uh, salt phase extraction studies. Maybe it will be a good adsorbent for trace species and low blank and high chemical and mechanical stability is very important for as ad, for the adsorbent because of the uh, uh, at the especially in the elution step we used and high concentrated acids or bases and it should be uh, stable for uh, chemicals and also mechanical stability is very important fast kinetics of adsorption and desorption is another important properties for adsorbent. Reversible adsorption, 
high selectivity and high recovery rates for our analysts is the impo important and other important properties for the adsorbent. Uh, nowadays, nanomaterials uh, are usually used for the uh, solid uh, phase extraction studies as adsorbents. Generally, organic adsorbents, inorganic adsorbents, and biological adsorbents could be used. And also hybrid materials, which contains inorganic organic combination, which contains inorganic biological combination, or which contains organic and biological compos uh, uh, biological uh, system uh, could be used. Uh, for example, uh, as an organic materials, uh, carbon nanotubes, graphene, uh, metal organic frameworks, and by, as biological uh, sample, uh, we can give uh, bacteria, nanocellulose, uh, nano organisms and others. And for uh, unorganic adsorbents, uh, metal nanotubes, natural zeolis and others could be used solid phase extraction studies. Uh, for example, in this work, we start with a uh, carbon nanotubes uh, for the salt phase extraction of uh, uh, traces, um, metal ions in the environmental samples. In this work, we use carbon nanotubes as adsorbent and we select uh, a ligand ammonium pyrrolidine DTO carbamate for the uh, to occurrence of uh, metal chelats, uh, uh, all which is uh, adsorption is suitable at the surface of carbon nanotubes and adsorbent amounts is approximately 300 milligram. We can easily elute uh, uh, adsorbent analytes from the surface of carbon nanotubes by using one molar nitric acid in acetone and other uh, conditions. And also, all after uh, optimization, all conditions we can we can easily apply to our methodology for the salt phase extraction of uh, our analytes from food and other uh, environmental samples with satisfactory results. Uh, another example uh, for the usage of uh, carbon nanotubes. Uh, for uh, salt phase extraction of cadmium, lead, zinc, and nickel ions from food samples uh, by using uh, impregnation procedures with a ligand, uh, which is called for to triazo resorcinol. Uh, and we can easily uh, get quantitative results for our analytes by using only 300 milligram of adsorbent. And then uh, uh, we can apply these procedures for the preconcentration and separation of these ions from food samples, including spinach leaves and other food samples. As pointed in the beginning, uh, we can uh, procedure, we can, pro we, can uh, we can easily form some nanocomposite materials by the dispersion of particles in a matrix nanometer uh, scale. Uh, for example, some nanocomposites are possible, metal ceramic combination, metal metal combination, inorganic polymer combination, polymer-polymer combination. Uh, and these nanocomposites are very selective and very good adsorption properties for the solid phase uh, extraction, solid phase micro extraction of trace analyte ions. For example, in this uh, uh, paper, in this work, 
we used uh, polypyrrol and multivolt carbon nanotubes composite for the solid phase extraction of lead, lead two ions in water samples with satisfactory results. Uh, this adsorbent has uh, a wonderful, uh, as a good adsorbent for the selective uh, solid phase extraction of lead ions. And also we can use only one milliliter of LRAT, which is three molar nitric acid. And also uh, adsorbent amount is uh, 200 milligram. And also another combination for the uh, solid phase extraction studies, uh, a new hybrid materials, which has also uh, uh, magnetic properties. Magnetic properties is very important for us for the uh, selective uh, separation of our adsorbents from the uh, our uh, aqueous samples. Here uh, you can see uh, the collection of adsorbents from the uh, in the both uh, figures. You can see the uh, absorption of, uh, sorry, you can see the collection of uh, our uh, adsorbents on the uh, surface of veil by the helping of a magnetic, uh, a, a magnet. And uh, this is uh, very good properties. This is very good uh, properties for us for the separation of our uh, our uh, adsorbents from the aqueous samples. And also we apply to this procedure, uh, our new adsorbent, which is a combination of, which is a hybrid materials with the combination of magnetic alanine amine modified graphene oxide, polyvinyl acetate, covinyl divenzen composites, uh, which is uh, a new procedure called vortex assisted vortex assisted uh, magnetic solid phase extraction of some metal ions uh, from the uh, environmental samples. Uh, our analysis was uh, lead, copper, uh, cadmium, nickel, and uh, cobalt. And uh, another new application of these procedures. Uh, by uh, the preconcentration and separation of uh, ZRAM, which is a pesticide. It was uh, uh, contains zinc ions, uh, and uh, we can easily, easily separate ZRAM from the aqueous samples and uh, solid phase extraction of ZRAM uh, by using magnetic carboxylated nanodiamonds, which is, which is a, new and good adsorbents for the ZRAM uh, pesticides. Uh, we have uh, applied these uh, procedures to pesticides. ZRAM pesticides contains of some food samples and also some uh, water samples. Uh, in, the, in the preparation step, uh, we are using uh, solver thermal process, processes for the hybrid materials. Uh, if your uh, solvent is uh, water, the procedure is called as hydrothermal synthesis. Uh, as you can see uh, in the figure, we can uh, prepare our uh, solid phases, which will be hybrid materials. Uh, with water uh, at the at Teflon pump, uh, we uh, used pressure and temperature uh, at suitable pH, and sometimes, uh, for example, two or three hours later, a uh, new nanostructures will occur. This system is called as hydrothermal synthesis, and we have also uh, a new materials. Uh, new composites in our lab for the uh, solid phase extraction uh, of uh, traces 
organic or inorganic materials. And also uh, we can uh, combine different kinds of materials, including some crystals, polymers, quantum dots, and uh, carbon-based nanomaterials and others, uh, other materials by uh, using hydrothermal procedure. This is the uh, our hydrothermal processing units. Maybe simply it is a, a suitable Teflon band. Teflon band. We can uh, control pH. Sorry, we can control pressure and uh, also we can control temperature of this system at the suitable suitable by using if we use water, this system is called as a uh, hydrothermal system. And also it's possible to use different uh, uh, solvents, for example, ethanol, amine, uh, methanol, ethanol, taurine. Uh, it, it was, you can use different uh, solvents for this uh, Teflon bump system and methodology is generally called as solvent thermal methodology. And uh, as a sample, uh, I can give uh, some our published works in some uh, good analytical journals. For example, the, at this work, we used molybdenum sulfide and uh, iron oxide nanocomposite as an efficient absorbent for dispersive solid phase extraction of lead and copper ions from the uh, some water and food samples uh, at the prior to their determination by using flame atomic absorption uh, spectrometry. Uh, this is the procedures uh, we used ammonium molybdite plus uh, two acid amide at pH six and the, all the conditions after uh, uh, suitable pH and suitable uh, pressure and suitable uh, temperature, we get uh, these materials, we get these materials. The characterization of these materials is important. As you know, we used uh, uh, scanning electron microscopy uh, at the uh, characterization steps. Also, some mapping uh, procedures for uh, at the D figure are uh, new materials you can uh, see and all and other uh, other uh, characterization techniques which include Raman spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, XRD, and uh, PET methodology. Uh, after all of these methodologies, we characterize our new materials and we can easily uh, use it for salt phase extraction studies at, for the so all uh, salt phase extraction, salt phase micro extraction studies. We combined, we uh, optimized all the analytical conditions. For example, as you can see here, the effect of pH is uh, investigated. Also, after optimization, the pH uh, we used, uh, we optimized uh, the uh, amounts of sorbents, uh, uh, optimized on the amounts of solvents. Then we applied to our methodology for the validation of the methodology to certificated reference materials, we can get quantitative results for the certificated results. Then uh, we apply to our methodology to uh, real samples, including water and food samples. Another new materials, uh, which is again, uh, hydrothermal synthesis, we obtained it, hydrothermal, hydrothermal synthesis. And this materials is most like multivolt carbon nanotubes, bismuth sulfate, 
nanomaterials for the solid phase extraction of uh, copper as pointed uh, in the uh, other slides uh, we get all characterization steps of these materials after characterization we used it for the solid phase extraction of solid phase extraction of uh, copper ions another example is nano diamond plus uh, molybdenum sulfide nano road composites for the solid phase extraction of lead ions uh, and we uh, have some uh, review papers uh, about these materials also this is the uh, a new one is uh, application of magnetic nanomaterials in bioanalysis especially uh, for the uh solid phase extraction of organic traces materials uh, organic traces uh, materials from pharmaceutical from biological and from other uh, bioanalysis systems we have a good review about uh, these materials with my uh, students uh, another uh review about uh, these kinds of works uh will reviewed in trains in environmental analytical chemistry at this year uh, this materials gives information about uh, this review gives uh, information about magnetic nanto materials for the removal separation and pre-concentration of uh, organic and inorganic pollutants at the trace levels uh, and their application, uh, their practical application will given this uh, paper. And another one is uh, again important uh, for us, important a new, uh, very, very new uh, paper, which is published in uh, Trends in Analytical Chemistry Journal, uh, which is very high uh, impact factor uh, with uh, Pnar Gumush Hanum, uh, metal organic frameworks, which are very important, very important and very high, uh, very good materials for the uh, uh, solid phase extraction of uh, trace metal ions. We reviewed uh, the, some works on the, uh, by using uh, metal organic frameworks in this review. And also we have uh, some works uh, for the uh, pre-concentration and separation of uh, some uh, organic analytes, including malathion and other organic analytes. This is the, uh, by using uh, metal organic frame, frameworks, this is the uh, one of uh, the sample for these kinds of works. Uh, Mohamed Habila and Ayman uh, Gahaver uh, uh, is one of my uh, Egyptian students. Uh, they are working at King South University. Uh, these are collaborative works for with King Out University, King South University. Uh, it was application of meta uh, organic frameworks for the uh, micro solid phase micro extraction of malathion uh, from uh, agricultural samples. Malathion, as you know, uh, one of the important pesticides in the uh, agriculture. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, application for these kinds of uh, studies. Uh, this one is a sim special one because this one is two-step uh, pre-concentration techniques. At the first step, we have a liquid, liquid fast micro extraction then at the second phase uh, second stage we have uh, solid phase micro extraction uh, work uh, for the uh, spectrophotometric 
determination of erythrocene in food and other samples. This was, this was published in uh, Food Chemistry Journal. Uh, switchable hydro hydrophility solvents. I will give uh, some information uh, after uh, these slides about uh, these uh, kinds of solvents, which is uh, a new uh, green solvents. I will give uh, some information about them. Uh, another a new application is uh, another new composite, composites, nanocomposites, which is con which contains carbon nanodot dots plus uh, graphene oxide graphene oxide hybrids for the uh, solid phase extraction of ibuprofen in the human blood samples. Priority HPLC analysis. This was uh, another. Uh, application of uh, solid phase micro extraction of uh, organic uh, analytes. And then uh, after this slides, I will give some uh, information about uh, liquid liquid micro extraction. In the modern trains of analytical chemistry, today's uh, new micro extraction techniques will preferred. Uh, this uh, uh, sample preparation steps uh, were selected because of its uh, some uh, some of its advantages uh, to use minimum amounts of solvents and regions, simplicity of steps, high pre concentration factors, green metals for green chemistry, green solvents like. Uh, switchable uh, solvents like ionic liquids, less, less harmful and harmless than uh, a process with simple step, lower cost, lower cost, high yield, time saving, low risk, and others. Uh, this step is very simple. Uh, uh, generally, we can summarize it like this addition to, uh, to extracting solvents at microliter level to sample solution, uh, formation of a cloudy solution, then centrifugation vortex and other processes, we can uh, two phases and our extraction phases is only uh, microliter level. And also after phase separation, we can easily determine our analytes in the extractan phases. Uh, at this works, we can use classical solvents, uh, ionic liquids, supramolecular solvents, depotectic solvents, CVJable solvents, and others. Uh, first, we start uh, with classical organic solvents, but everyone know that these kinds of solvents are very big problem for environment. And we know that their toxicology, uh, the uh, main disadvantage of uh, these kinds of solvents is this. Due to these points, maybe we select other new kinds of solvents, new generation solvents. But at the beginning, we start uh, these kinds of solvents, uh, uh, for example, like chloroform or carbon tetrachloride, but uh, they have some advantages, but their disadvantage, toxic, their toxicology, and uh, some of them are prohibited, prohibited uh, solvents. But I can give an uh, example about uh, these kinds of works, chromium speciation in the water samples by dispersive liquid liquid micro extraction combination uh, with total refraction x-ray fluorescence spectroscopy. We used uh, uh, as extracting solvents in this work, uh, uh, carbon tetrachloride and chloroform. And we can get quantitative results for the uh, speciation of chromium. And then, and other uh, kinds of solvents, ionic liquids, uh, ionic liquids like uh, organic salts, and they have 
uh, one cation and one anion sites. And also uh, they are uh, using different at the chemistry with different kinds of uh, parts of chemistry. And we used uh, ionic liquids for the solid phase. So, sorry, we used ionic liquids for the liquid phase micro extraction of uh, organic and inorganic analytes because of they are thermally stable, stable uh, fast stability is very good, high pre-concentration factor we can get, uh, high mass transfer is possible, but the main disadvantage of these materials are expensive. As an uh, example, I can give a, uh, our uh, work in the published in uh, desalination journal, high liquid dispersive uh, liquid liquid macro extraction of lead ions from uh, environmental samples. Uh, we, and we can get uh, we can get quantitative results by using uh, these ionic liquids for the separation and preconcentration of light ions by using micro extraction strategy. Uh, another one is uh, supramolecular solvents. They are combined, uh, they are obtained uh, by mixing have long carbon chain such as hydroxyl solvents and uh, carboxylic acids with uh, tetrahydrofuran or tetrabutyl ammonium species. And uh, they are very new and very good uh, solvents, very good green solvents for the uh, uh, micro extraction of uh, traces metal ions because they are environmental friendly solvents. And also uh, fast separation is very simple and we can get quantitative results by using supramolecular solvents. This is the main methodology. At the end, we can get two different phases. Uh, our extraction phases is the upper level of our wheel. We can easily separate uh, extractant phase to aqueous was by using uh, micro shrinks and others techniques. And uh, as an example, we can uh, extract, we can extract to copper in environmental samples uh, by using supramolecular solvent micro extraction studies. We applied this methodology for the determination of uh, copper in food and uh, water samples. <coughs> <coughs> Another kinds of a new generation solvents is the protective solvents. We call them as DES. Uh, they are uh, some a few simple, similar uh, physical properties uh, with ionic liquids. Uh, they are uh, very uh, environmental samples. Their price is uh, very lower than ionic liquids. And uh, they have, again, uh, two parts, uh, mainly uh, cloning, chlorine chloride, uh, vitamin B4, is uh, one part of uh, one part of the hypothetic solvents. Other part is you can select different kinds of materials and also uh, their most important aspects for having very low freezing freezing point and they are liquid below a uh, hundred fifty. Uh, centigrade derages, uh, and also they are most liquid at between room temperature and uh, 70 degrees. And also the application of uh, these kinds of solvents for the uh, micro extraction of trace cumin in food and herbal tea samples as given this procedure, uh, we can get quantitative results for the separation and preconcentration of uh, traces uh, 
curcumin in food and herbal samples. Uh, lastly, uh, another kinds of uh, new generation solvents is uh, switchable solvents. Switchable solvents have two forms, uh, polar and non-polar form, which they show uh, difference in the terms of their properties. We can easily change the polarity of uh, our solvents in uh, the uh, according to our aim. If we need uh, polar solvents, we can use uh, polar uh, polar kinds of uh, polar. Uh, we can convert our uh, solvents to polar form or. If we need a non-polar form, we can easily uh, convert uh, these uh, materials to non-polar form. This is the uh, how we can uh, change the polarity of, of the solvents. pH is uh, one of the uh, important parameter. We can use pH uh, or we can use temperature, we can use pressure, we can use carbon dioxide and other by, for example, by adding carbon dioxide or by removing carbon dioxide from the, our solvents, we can easily get uh, if which form we need. Uh, due to these points, we, we use term of switchable solvents for these materials. And I know I don't have too many times, but I'm summarized this methodology. If someone wants to uh, high information, uh, great information about this uh, solvents, uh, they can send uh, email and I can give uh, some additional information about them. Uh, this is the one of the example uh, which published in uh, Journal of Analytical Atomic Spectroscopy, which is very important journal for Royal Chemical Society, uh, switchable solvent based liquid phase micro extraction of copper to optimization and application to uh, environmental samples. Uh, we optimized all stage of uh, procedures and we can get quantitative results for the uh, extraction of copper ions from the environmental samples. Uh, then uh, we have some uh, review also about micro extraction studies. Uh, we published these kinds of reviews in uh, good journals. For example, this one is uh, with my students, one of Pakistani students and uh, one of uh, Turkish students, as good result, a new trends in extraction of pesticides from environmental and fruit uh, samples, applying micro, ex micro extraction based green uh, chemistry scenario. Uh, this is an important review at these kinds of works. Another one is uh, at published that critical review in uh, analytical chemistry, uh, micro extraction technique based on new trends in especially in food analysis. It is published in critical review with analytical chemistry. Nowadays, uh, we are working on quantum dots in uh, the solid phase extraction, uh, double layered hydrox hydroxides uh, in solid phase extraction, covalent organic frameworks at the solid phase extraction studies, new solvents for micro extraction, amine solvents and other solvents, nano extraction and new kinds of extraction strategies and solid phase nano extraction. And uh, lastly, nano engines, nano engines and nano membranes, micro factories for the uh, especially drug deliveries and others. And lastly, <coughs> uh, we have a <coughs> chapter at this book about uh, micro extraction studies and book of nanomaterials in analytical chemistry, especially salt phase micro extraction and nano hybrid materials. And also we have a book which is published this year 
about uh, by published by El Survivor by New Generation Green Solvents for Separation and Preconcentration of Organic and Inorganic Species. Uh, it's uh, published in a survivor and also uh, this was a good uh, book at this area, which is uh, written by us. And also uh, I want to thank uh, to, I'm a member of uh, Turkish Academy of Sciences, uh, to, uh, Tuba. Uh, I want to thank their uh, financial supports and also I want to thank to, uh, to the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey, which called TÜBİTAK. And I want to thank uh, my university, RGS University uh, for all supports. And also I want to thank all of you. And I want to uh, some last thanks to uh, my uh, brother, uh, Doctor, Professor, Professor Doctor uh, Mitad Ibrahim, and my sister, Doctor Professor Doctor Hanan, and uh, I want to thank all of you. Uh, inshallah, next year we will be together at Cairo, or we will be together at Turkey. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for all things.